everyone, welcome back to Tech Cravers. Today we're doing a full ultimate PS3 emulation setup guide for Android, and specifically for Snapdragon 8 Elite devices, covering the best settings, what to tweak and what to expect so you can get the smoothest experience possible. Now at the moment there are basically two main ways to do PS3 emulation on Android. The first one is RPCS3, which is what this entire guide is going to focus on. And the second option is APS3E, which has been getting frequent updates lately and with each update is showing some really impressive gains in stability and performance. But for this video, as I said, we're sticking with RPCS3, because in my experience it still offers the best out of the box performance across a wider range of games and it's the easiest place to start for most people. That said, PS3 emulation on Android is still a bit of a rabbit hole right now, there are games that run on APS3e that simply refuse to boot in RPCS3, and there are games that run great in RPCS3 that don't play nice on APS3e. So depending on what you want to play, you may end up using both anyway. And a quick question, if you already know that you'd like a dedicated APS3e setup guide as well, make sure to leave a like and drop a comment down below so I know there's some interest. If enough of you ask for it, I'll make a follow up video. But alright, with all that out of the way, let's kick off this guide and get everything set up properly. One small but important detail before we start, you're going to need an Android device with a high-end chipset, ideally a Snapdragon 8 Elite, preferably one of the newer revisions. In this video I'm using an AYN Odin 3, but you'll also find this chip in other devices, for example the Ioneo Conquer Pocket Fit and quite a few of the latest flagship smartphones as well if you want to go that route. Alright, the first step we need to download the emulator itself. What we're using here is an Android fork of the original RPCS3 project, so go ahead and click the first link in the video description to go to their GitHub and download the latest release. Now it might look like the latest version is pretty old, you'll probably see a date like April 25th on the download page, but don't worry, the emulator will actually update itself automatically the first time you launch it. And in case you wonder, it's the APK file that you want to download. And if you get a pop-up asking you to allow Chrome to make changes on your device, just hit allow so the installation can proceed. Once the emulator is installed, tap open and you'll get a prompt asking whether you want to allow notifications, choose whatever you prefer. Right after that you should see a quick update window because the emulator will immediately download and install the latest build. In my case it's updated to the 25.10.11 release as you can see here. Next you can close the emulator and open up your browser again. Now we need to download the PS3 firmware for the emulator and the good news is we can get it directly from Sony. Go to the second link in the video description labeled PS3 firmware and on that page scroll down to how to install PS3 system software and click reinstall using a computer. Now press and hold the blue button that says download PS3 update until a quick menu pops up and then choose download link to download the firmware file to your device. If you get a warning saying the file can't be downloaded safely just tap on keep. And once it's downloaded, close the browser and open RPCS3 again. Tap the hamburger menu in the top left and select the option that says Firmware None. From there, locate the firmware file we just downloaded. It should be in your device's downloads folder unless you chose a different download location. And once you find it, tap on the file named ps3update.pub and the emulator will start installing the firmware automatically. It'll take a little while so just let it finish completely before we move on. After that we'll jump into the emulator settings and start tuning things properly. Alright you can now see that the firmware is installed, it should show firmware 4.92 at the top of the hamburger menu and you can also see a firmware icon on the home screen which is another quick way to confirm everything was installed correctly. But now it's time to set a few baseline settings, the ones you'll keep enabled pretty much all the time, and I will also show you where to make a few tweaks that can be useful on a per game basis. Right now there's no way to save game specific profiles in RPCS3 on Android, so you should expect to change a couple of settings on the fly depending on what game you're playing. But don't let that scare you, you'll get used to it quickly and we're only going to touch a small fraction of the options here. Tap the menu, go to settings and then select advanced settings. For this guide we're only changing two sections here, core and video, everything else we'll leave as is. So start by tapping on core. 
Scroll down until you see max LLVM compile threads and set it to the maximum 16. As soon as you change a setting you'll notice a small asterisk appear next to it and that's really useful because it shows you exactly what you have modified in case you forget it later. For the baseline setup there's nothing else we need to change in the core settings, but it's worth noting that further down in the core settings you'll find a couple of options you can experiment with later if your game is unstable. For example, RSX FIFO accuracy is set to fast by default, but if a specific game keeps crashing you can try switching it to atomic. And you'll also see CPU block size which is safe by default, but for certain titles you can experiment with setting it to mega as well. Alright, with all that said, go back one step in the menu and jump into the video settings instead. Here, make sure that the renderer is set to Vulkan and set the resolution to 720p, which is PS3 native resolution if you haven't done it already. Snapdragon 8 Elite can handle that with no problem, but if you're using an older device, you can experiment with lowering the resolution here. Frame limit is set to auto by default and you can usually leave it there, but some games won't boot properly unless you manually cap the frame rate. For certain titles you may need to set it to something like 60fps or even PS3 native, so treat this as a per game setting as well. Next scroll down and disable MSAA. A bit further down you'll find the bright color buffers and read color buffers. These two toggles can be make or break. They can dramatically improve a game or they can prevent it from loading at all. So these are absolutely options you'll want to switch on and off depending on your game. And another setting worth experimenting with is stretch to display area, which is useful for titles that won't fill the screen by default, but it's entirely optional to use. Now scroll all the way down and tap on Vulkan. In here you can enable things like force FIFA present mode and asynchronous texture streaming too, but the by far most important part here is to scroll down to custom driver and enable turbo mode, which in many cases will drastically improve your performance. And one final tip here, go back two steps and open performance overlay. Then enable the overlay options. This isn't about performance, it's purely practical. When you're tweaking settings, the overlay makes it easy to tell whether a game is actually frozen or just compiling shaders, because you can see if the frame counter is moving or stuck. You can always turn it off later or skip it entirely if you don't want anything on your screen. Now, back on the main settings page, you also see an option for custom GPU drivers. This can be a huge deal if you're running an older device with outdated stock drivers. You can simply go in here, tap the big blue plus button, hit download and grab a newer, more optimized driver for your GPU. This guide isn't focused on older chipsets, but at least now you know where to find and install them. In general, I recommend trying one of the popular Turnip drivers, since they're often the best option for improving compatibility and performance on many Snapdragon devices. Now here's the important part, Snapdragon 8 Elite doesn't really have a proper custom driver available yet, so if you're on a newer device you don't need to change anything at all here, just stick with the default driver for now. And if better drivers do show up in the future, I'll make an update to let you know, so if you want to stay in the loop, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss it. And when it comes to input controls, there's honestly not much to say, it's about as painless as it gets. You can go inside the controller settings if you want to remap buttons manually, but in my case both the Odin 3's built-in controls and an external Xbox Series S controller paired over Bluetooth were detected and mapped automatically by RPCS3. So for most people you shouldn't need to touch anything here at all, it really couldn't be simpler. But now it's time to import your game library, because we need something to actually play, right? From the home screen, tap on the plus icon at the bottom right corner and here you can either select a folder that contains all your games or tap the icon that looks like a single file if you want to import one game at a time. I'm going to locate the folder that contains my entire PS3 library and import everything in one go. But just a heads up, depending on how many titles you're importing, RPCS3 can occasionally crash and you might have to repeat the process. It's annoying, but it happens. RPCS3 supports several PS3 formats, including SFB files for disk rips and PKG files for PSN style installs. In my experience, PKG games have been the most reliable when it comes to actual booting and being playable. So feel free to experiment with different formats and if you're dealing with ISOs, you can even extract the contents and try importing the extracted folder instead. But that's a rabbit hole on its own and not something we're diving into in this guide. But once you have found your game folder, tap on use this folder and let RPCS3 start importing your library. 
This can take a very long time depending on how many games you're adding, so yeah, this is the perfect moment to grab those legendary snacks and a drink. Or just come back later and let it do its thing. And honestly, if you want more control and fewer headaches, it can be smarter to import games one by one, especially while you're still figuring out what formats and settings works best on your device. Much, much, much later. Alright, I got a bunch of games imported and there's only one more thing I forgot to mention earlier. Make sure your device is set to performance or high performance mode, if your device has selectable power profiles or boost modes. PS3 emulation is heavy and you'll get a much more stable experience if the chipset isn't being held back. And once you've found settings that work well for a specific game and everything feels stable, you can absolutely experiment with lower performance modes later to save battery. But for testing and initial setup, start at full power. And at this point that's basically it. From here on I'm going to test a bunch of games and share the best settings I've found for each one. Enjoy! Athena! You will suffer for this! Don't let him open the door!
Hi Faith, welcome back. And that's going to wrap up this ultimate PS3 emulation setup guide for Android on Snapdragon 8 Elite. The big takeaway is that RPCS3 can already deliver a genuinely impressive experience, but it's still very much a game by game journey. Some titles run beautifully with the right settings, others need a couple of quick toggles, and a few simply won't cooperate yet. That's just the reality of PS3 emulation on Android right now. If this guide helped you out, please leave a like and drop a comment with what game you want me to test next, or what device you're running. And if you want a dedicated APS3E setup guide as well, tell me in the comments so I know there's some interest. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.